Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for spending your evening with us. We're so grateful to have you here. I am going to jump in to exercising for brain health. But first, I wanted to let you know there is a very special surprise celebrity guest who is going to be joining me. That is why I've got an extra chair right here for him. Little, little, uh, clue there as to who it might be. But anyways, he's going to join us. He's on another call right now in the other room, but he's going to join me in person. And I can't wait to have this conversation about exercise and brain health and dementia um, very soon with you and have him join us. And we'll talk about, you know, everything. Please add your questions to the Q&A. That's where we're going to go first. And so please let us know what's on your mind, what you want to learn. But first, we're going to dive in to this conversation around how important exercise is is for brain health. So big picture, why is exercise important? There's two big reasons. And this is part of why we need aerobic exercise plus strength training. Just walking, if we are asking for the miracle of reversing dementia, if we're asking for the miracle of reversing cognitive decline, we've got to do more than just walk. And so we need aerobic exercise to get that blood flowing to our brain to deliver the nutrients and oxygen. We also need muscle building because that muscle is going to send the signals like testosterone and BDNF to the brain that are going to promote the production of new neurons and new connections between those cells of the brain. Okay, so let's get into it. Um, I... Of course, we are talking about these foundations for brain health, all of the things that we can add together and stack on top of each other, right? This is the whole premise of Dr. Bredesen's work is that when we start to stack the good things on top of each other, we get better outcomes. This can feel overwhelming, right? So that's why we're here for you. Tyler's here with me. She is assisting. Please, when you put things in the chat, when you put things in the Q&A, make sure you send it to everyone. But Tyler and I are going to answer your questions, as is my special guest. And when you have questions, everybody else has them too. So add them to the chat, add them to the Q&A, but make sure that you send them to everyone. So as we get started here, right, we've talked about the organic ketogenic diet a couple of weeks. We talked about activities that we can do, brain stimulating activities we can do for engagement and for to, that are fun. Those are components of this protocol, of this approach, but it's not everything. So we've got to start also getting movement and optimizing the movement and exercise that we're getting so that we get that benefit for our brain. Next week, we're going to talk about more of this in terms of connection, environment, and what medical treatment can look like. We're going to talk about most of those things, but we'll keep going. It's it, In just 90 minutes, we can't cover it all. There's so much to go through. And for one person, you might want to start with diet. For another person, it might be exercise. For someone else, it might be sleep. And so we want to make sure that you are armed with enough information that you know where to start for you, what's going to be best for you, what's going to get you that that win so that you can roll that momentum into more great foundations for brain health, particularly the behavioral changes, those decisions that we make every day about what we decide to eat, what we put in our mouth, how much movement we get, what time we go to bed, the people we connect with. All of those things are so crucially important to the trajectory of our health and our brain health in particular. So let's get into movement and exercise. I want to share with you one of the uh, one of our coaching clients. We just finished up our, our we had we've had two programs going a Monday and a and a Wednesday group since January, and we heard from Sean this week. We had our last we wrapped up our last call on Monday. And he said, this program has been extremely helpful to me. I've been in ketosis and dropped about 24 pounds that he wanted to drop. I've increased exercise. He had just come from playing golf and now he walks the course where he didn't used to walk the course. He would just get in the cart. Yesterday, he wasn't even playing golf, but he still walked for four, nearly four and a half miles. My life has transformed and I have improvement in my short-term memory. I think this program is phenomenal and I'm going to refer a lot of other people because of the transformation he got in his life. Now, Sean, when he started, he had just been diagnosed with Alzheimer's by his neurologist. He lost his driver's license. He was depressed. He had, of course, brain fog. He was feeling unsure of himself on his feet and his life is completely different. And this is the type of transformation that I want for every one of you. If you are starting to go in this direction, if you are noticing that your 
brain, you haven't been diagnosed by a neurologist, that's even better, right? We want to start as soon as we can because we have the most confidence when we start these changes earlier, then they can start to add on top of each other. We get this cumulative effect of all of these great behavioral lifestyle changes and we get them for longer, right? We don't have to suffer. You don't have to end up where Sean was, where you're feeling desperate and depressed because of um, an interaction with the neurologist where you lose your driver's license and get a, a, you know, a life-changing diagnosis. So the time to start is now. I want everyone to have access to this. And that is what Tyler and I do here. So if you want to see us as providers, if you want to do health coaching, if you want to just get the book, if you want to move into Marama, we have options for everyone, no matter what stage you're in. All we want is for you to get started. So goals for a typical day. We talked about this last week. We want meaningful connection. We want to get outside. Physical activity is the part that we're going to talk about specifically tonight, and we want to get that in nearly every day, right? We want I, the most recent statistic I heard was six hours a week, which might mean 45 minutes every day. It might be an hour, six days a week, and you take one off. We want to get brain stimulation as well, and we want to be creative. We want to do all of these things. So where does this fit into your schedule? This is one of the first things we do in our coaching calls is we start to design what does an ideal week look like? What does an ideal day look like? And how can we move, maybe not arrive at that ideal day overnight, but how can we start to move in that direction? I've shared with you what we do at Marama and how, what that looks like. So we've talked about the diet that's here in the orange. We've talked about some of these white pieces. We talked about meditation, uh, brain stimulation, creativity. And tonight we're going to talk about the physical exercise, walking and the brain gym. So what does that look like at Marama? At Marama, after breakfast, everyone goes for a walk. Sometimes it's 90 minutes, sometimes it's two hours, sometimes it's just a quick 30 minutes minute walk, but we want to just get moving, get blood flowing. We want to help, that will help with digestion of a big meal. Typically, breakfast is the biggest meal at Marama. We've all heard the adage, you know, eat like a king for breakfast, uh, um, what is it like a middle-class person for lunch and then a, a popper for, for dinner. And that's because we want to have our biggest meal in the morning. And then our metabolism, sometimes that's what's best for us. For many people, we, we sleep much better when we skip that, uh, that big, heavy dinner. We don't have to be metabolizing or digesting at night. Now, some people intermittent fast. That's also a great strategy. We don't do that at Marama. We have about a 15 hour fast because dinner is at five to five 30 and then breakfast is until eight. But, and I do recommend a three hour fast between dinner and, and sleep, but helping in terms of activities and exercise, we want to make sure we're not exercising with a really full stomach. So a walk is a great way to get a little bit of movement, but without, you know, after a heavier meal and it shouldn't interfere with that walk, it will actually help your digestion. And then we have a very light snack. You'll see light snack here before the more vigorous exercise. Many people might try to have a big dinner and then go exercise. It doesn't, you don't get as much out of it. You don't feel as good doing it, right? So making sure that we're having meals at times that support our activity and exercise habits. Exercise types, I wanna dive into all four of these. So there's aerobic exercise, which I already mentioned. I think I'm gonna sneeze, excuse me. Helps to get blood flowing, get blood to the brain, oxygen, nutrients. It also helps with heart health, right? We know this is why it's called cardio exercise because it helps with that muscle of our heart. It also helps to prevent atherosclerosis and plaques, it keeps our blood pressure stable. And brain health and heart health are totally intertwined. They are not at odds. Some people will suggest, oh, if I'm helping my brain, does that mean I'm hurting my heart? No, over and over again, I had a patient today who came in. When he got on a ketogenic diet, his heart health got better. He improved his lipid profiles. And so we want to do the same with exercise. Where is that combination where we can, we can be really efficient about getting exercise that helps our heart and our brain? And certainly cardio exercise or aerobic exercise can help with that. Strength training is building muscle. That muscle sends signals to our brain that says to grow, to create new neurons and new connections between them. 
We need to build muscle also as we age to protect our bones and to protect us from falls. As we get older, if there's balance issues, if we are going in the direction of frailty, we can be more at risk for falling. And many people will have experiences of having a fall, breaking a hip and not recovering. So we wanna prevent that from happening, stay strong as we age and, and get the benefits of exercise. Now, this next one you may not have heard of. Dual task exercises have been popularized, hopefully by myself. I'm on a mission to tell everyone about dual task exercises. But the science comes from um, many people out there, but the Pacific Neuroscience Institute, uh, led by David Merrill and then Ryan Glatt in their brain gym, they have published extensively about this connection between better cognitive outcomes, better, better cognitive performance, when we're combining physical exercise with cognitive exercise. So in the chat right now, I want everyone to brainstorm. What does that look like? What does this combination look like? A very simple example is walking and talking. We're exercising, we're moving, and we're talking, we're having carrying on a conversation. So we need to stay cognizant. We need to stay engaged. We need to be listening. We need to be preparing a response. What does that look like? What could that look like for you? Does... Uh, maybe a class. I have a picture here of a hula dancer and anyone dancing, whether it's Zumba or ballroom dancing or hula or any type of dance, we're having to stay cognizant and aware of the music, maybe of our partner. If we're in a, in a partner dancing, like a ballroom dancing or a salsa, we need to stay cognizant of where we are in space. So this engages multiple parts of the brain and can help. I'm sure many of you have heard of the research connecting ballroom dancing to better cognitive outcomes. So how can we leverage this? For many people, it might mean just going to a yoga class or a Pilates class where we're hearing the cues of the instructor. So I want to see in the chat, what, as we brainstorm together here, what could this look like for you? Let's put something down on paper. Let's put it out to the group. Let's inspire others because I'm sure there's somebody out there who's already doing this, who's already heard of this and is really nailing it. It has a great idea that other people will benefit from. So please, please, please add to the chat. So Jennifer said, I used to try to read articles while jogging on the treadmill because I found jogging alone boring. Yeah, Jennifer, no falling. You're not allowed to fall and break anything while you do that. So many people will get on a treadmill or a rower or the Peloton, a bike, and they'll listen to a podcast. That's a great way to do it. There are other, you know, the only thing that I recommend is if you're going to do that, to make sure that you don't check out. Because I notice I do that. If I'm going for a run and I'm listening to a podcast that's really intellectually stimulating, sometimes I just zone out and I stop listening. And so make sure whatever you choose, you stay present to it. And what, I, what I've what i started doing is I pause it and then I say out loud, as long as it's not off, awkward, um, no one's looking or listening, I'll say out loud what I just learned during my podcast, right? So if I'm listening to Peter Atia or Andrew Huberman or somebody like that, um, or even I, I listen to a lot of Tara Brock, she's a meditation coach and teacher. And um, it, it, I, I basically repeat back what I understood and learned. And that keeps me more engaged. It makes me pay attention closer. I love that uh, people are doing multiplication tables while they're, they're lifting weights and doing strength training, walking and playing bagpipes. Oh, and Scottish country dancing. You have to remember the patterns. What fun. That is the other really important piece about anything we decide to add to our routine. Do we enjoy it? So I can't tell you how many people have told me that it's a chore to exercise. They hate going to the gym. They hate doing their brain exercises on the computer. Let's figure out something that you love, that you enjoy. What would you look forward to doing? I love the idea of meditative walking. I think you probably have to up it a little bit. You want to be at about 75, 80% of effort, both cognitively and physically. So the, yes, you, you can, you can walk and meditate and, and do mindful walking. And you also want to up the ante a little bit walking and singing. I love that new classes like hip hop and Zumba. That is perfect. I absolutely love all these ideas. 
What about playing piano? Playing piano is fantastic and wonderful. That's more what we talked about last week though, where you're engaged in a creative pursuit, like music that you enjoy, but you're not physically active unless you have a unique piano where you can be maybe maybe like a stand-up piano where you can be on the treadmill at the same time as you play piano. I don't know. Maybe you've got one of those, surely. But great idea. Ping pong. I love it. Pickleball is another one that comes up that's really fun for people to do. It's socially engaging. You can often play outside. There are so many fun games that we can get involved in that count as dual task exercise. So this is a really important thing to explore. Now, Pansy has a great question. What if you have physical limitations and chronic pain? We've got to find something that gets you active and moving, even with the physical limitations. So some people are in a wheelchair, but they get an exercise bike for their arms. Other people have, have pain, chronic pain, and there's something called a goscue. This uses exercise to get you out of chronic pain. So really exciting, great questions and great brainstorm, great ideas. Who is ready to commit to something? Who is ready to commit? Tell us what you're committing to and put it in the chat so we all, can all be inspired and maybe someone here can even hold you accountable. So that's dual task, where we're cognitively and physically engaging at the same time. And then EWAT is another unique type of exercise where we exercise with oxygen therapy. So this can make exercise a lot more accessible to people because if you aren't conditioned, if you haven't been exercising for a long time, then when you add when you add oxygen to your exercise, you can actually feel like you're stronger. You can feel more benefit from the exercise. And then if you want to take that up even further, take it up a notch, if you're looking for that hormetic effect of stressing the system so that you get more resilience, maybe if you're in the earlier stages of cognitive decline, then adding contrast oxygen therapy can be even more beneficial. That can help with detox, inflammation, can help with the turnover of senescent cells. And we, we basically can get a lot more out of it when we stress the system, as long as you're in a position where you can tolerate that stress. If not, then EWAT, which uses the same machine, can be really helpful as well. So Dr. Bredesen is a huge fan of EWAT. Every time I think I review a case with him, he says, are they doing EWAT? Are they doing EWAT? And sometimes it's logistically challenging to find a, um, a machine near you, but many chiropractors, other offices, more and more I'm seeing these kind of brain biohacking, uh, neurohacking um, pop-up shops where they'll have these devices available for people to come in and use so you don't have to buy one at home. <gasps> My surprise guest has arrived. I'm so excited to maybe, this is the perfect time. Really? Outstanding. Everyone, this is Dr. Robert Lev. He Hello. is a, I think, are you a certified celebrity yet? I don't know what the certification process is. So Dr. Robert Lev is a neuroscientist and he is an expert in how to use the science to help prevent and reverse Alzheimer's. So he you may have already seen him on TikTok or on Instagram. He has millions of people who follow him to get this information each and every day. So it's a huge honor to have him visiting us for a couple of days. He came to Marama yesterday and toured with us. And um, we're, I'm just delighted that we are going to get some extra insights from having him. So it, it goes from being the Heather show to the Robert <laughs> and Heather show. show. Um, Heather show. I would watch that. I'd watch the Heather show. <laughs> well, lots of people watch the Dr. Lev show and he's gotten great questions from his audience. And I know that there are a ton of you out here who have questions that he can answer. So um, I think what, what we'll do is... I want to make sure that we have discussed everything that I wanted to get to really quick. Let's calculate your target heart rate. So while we do this, I'm going to take you through calculating your target heart rate, because while we're here, this is the moment. Get out a piece of paper, get out your calculators that, you know, your teacher said you would never have in your back pocket. Now we do. Everybody's got one right there. Get out your calculator and get out a piece of paper and let's calculate your target heart rate. You're going to take the number 220 subtract your age, and this is going to give us your maximum heart rate. This is as high as you ever want your heart rate to get with vigorous exercise. So the example I have here is 220 minus 70. If you're 70 years old, you can use my example. This belongs to you now. 
But if you're not at 70, plug in your age. Are you 68? Are you 75? And then you'll get that number, 220 minus your age, will be your maximum heart rate. And then we're going to do another step, but just get there first. And I'm going to ask you, do you recommend a target heart rate for exercise? Um, first, I just have a blanket statement about exercise. I really want you to do exercise that you enjoy because you want this to be a lifelong habit. And it turns out that's actually the best exercise for your health. Research out of Scandinavia found that those who do who played tennis had a seven to nine year increase in longevity. Those who did uh, cycling and swimming, or those who did uh, soccer, it was like four years, cycling and swimming, three years, jogging was only two years. I immediately stopped jogging. I said, look, if I'm only getting two years for this, I'm not doing this. Um, so tennis, the, more fu the fun sport, those people lived longer, in part because it's also social and it's got hand-eye coordination, which is really good for your brain. Outside, um, so you're probably yeah. getting the vitamin D that's so good for your brain. So choose an exercise that you really like. I think that's the most important. Um, you know, the, the theory about heart rate, Dr. David Sinclair talks about you actually want to be out of breath when that's appropriate for you. It's not appropriate for everyone, but for some of us, it's appropriate for us to run or hit the rowing machine as hard as we can for 30 seconds, a minute, and get out of breath. So not, that's not appropriate for everyone. Zone two training is great. Um, zone two training is, is you're working out to the point where you, you may say you're jogging and you're barely able to maintain a conversation. That's a good level to do that for an extended period of time. But you can, generally speaking, if you're doing exercise for 45 minutes a day or six hours for the week. So if you play tennis a couple, a couple times a week, that's great. So I would really find something fun that you enjoy. I think that's the most important. And if you're doing that, after that, you can optimize for, for things like, like heart rate or for time. But if you're exercising most days and you're really enjoying it, I think that's what's most important to start out. I couldn't agree more. It's not about doing it for January, right? We all make these, these New Year's resolutions. And then by the end of January, we're not keeping up with them. It's not about picking it up tomorrow and then forgetting that you ever talk, heard from us. And it's really about what can I do to shift the trajectory of how I age? And that comes with full behavior transformation. Lifestyle changes that last. That's what really has the impact. And so figuring out, going through the process, and this is what we do in the coaching program, is we go through the process of discovering what are my motivators? What's holding me back? How can I make lasting changes? How can I get down into the root of what's keeping me from making these great decisions for my health? We all know that exercise is good for us but we still have trouble doing it and doing it regularly and making it a habit. So making it fun, step number one. So let's go back to calculating. This is the target heart rate that we are looking for for that six hours a week, typically. And this will get, you'll get your cardiovascular aerobic exercise in this way. So what we're gonna do, okay, get out your paper, your pen and paper again, get out your calculator again, and we're gonna take that maximum heart rate Again, if your age is 70, that maximum heart rate is 150. And we're gonna multiply it by 60%. If your age is 70, then that's going to be 90. And this is gonna be 60% of your maximum heart rate. And that's the lower end of where you wanna be for those six hours a week. And then the, your max heart rate times 75%, again, in the example, if you're 70 years old, it's going to be 112.5. You can worry, don't worry about the 0.5. Don't get, we don't have to get too complicated with fractions here. But in this example, your target heart rate, which is what we want to arrive at and spend these hours per week exercising in, we want to be in this target heart rate range between 90 and 112 if your age is 70. Now, if you're 71 or 72 or 68, just go with these numbers. You don't have to do the math. But if you're significantly older or younger than that, take this moment to do the math. 220, 220 minus your age equals your maximum heart rate. And then when you calculate that, you take that number, that maximum heart rate times 60% and you get this, the lower number and then there's a range. So 75% times your maximum heart rate is the upper end of that range. And then you wanna spend those hours of exercise each week between 60% of maximum heart rate 
and 75% of maximum heart rate. And this is gonna get you, based on the Framingham study, some, some big cardiovascular um, inquiries and studies this is where you're going to get the maximum benefits for your health span. So what does that look like? Put in the chat, tell us, what are you going to do? How are you going to spend those hours? I love it. Ewat rocks. Thank you, Tyler, for giving everyone the Livo too. Um, yes, the, that's what you would purchase to do exercising with oxygen therapy or contrast oxygen therapy at home. Oh, yay. There's people who know hi, you. Hi, Natalie. Yay, yay, yay. I knew everybody would know you. We love Dr. Lev, so do Smith. we, so do we. Um, oh, yay, you, lots of love for Dr. Lev. I'm starstruck <laughs> too. <laughs> so good. Um, do you have any thoughts about exercising with oxygen, Ewan? Um, so the way I use oxygen, I, by the way, I love the cans of oxygen, like the boost oxygen. I used to live in Colorado and they're very accessible there, but you can order them online or on Amazon. I love, first of all, I got them during the pandemic because it's a really easy way to make sure you had oxygen and made sure my parents had them. My parents are in their seventies. So I said, mom and dad, you're getting oxygen just because. So it's a good thing to have for that. I love it before bed. I love it um, after exercise to help recovery. And so that's my favorite way of doing it. I, I would often exercise very hard and found that I had brain fog for the next 30 minutes or an hour because my muscles were using the nutrients in my body to repair themselves, but taking um, taking some oxygen after exercise, I recovered so much faster. It was so worth it. I could I could I felt better. I could return to work easier, and so forth. And so I'd recommend oxygen for recovery, definitely. And I see no negative impact of breathing. So basically, boost oxygen is eighty percent oxygen. No, excuse me, it's ninety five percent oxygen. Whereas atmosphere is only twenty percent oxygen, eighty percent nitrogen. So it's like five five times as rich in oxygen. I see no negative side effect of doing that. It's calming. It's relaxing. It feels good. Um, it's nourishing to the body. And so if you can afford boost oxygen, it's not that much. Um, you can buy it on Amazon. You can look at the prices there. And I don't have an affiliation with them. I totally would. I would definitely sell their product. I use it, but I don't, I don't have a financial relationship with them. Um, I think that's great for recovery. Or if you're feeling brain fog, or if you're just upset, if you're just upset, take some deep breaths or take some deep breaths of oxygen, really nourish your brain. And, and we often feel better pretty quickly. And have you ever exercised with oxygen, with concentrated oxygen? Like in between sets or like breathing it? Breathing it? No, I haven't done that. I've we done it. In, live O2. Oh, I've done it in between sets and I've really liked it. But I haven't, I haven't done, I haven't done that. Yeah. So a great way to increase your exercise tolerance is to breathe oxygen while you're exercising. So really fun. I'm so glad everybody's getting excited about that. And hyperbaric chambers. So have you talked to people about doing hyperbarics? There's, there's data on hyperbarics for Alzheimer's. So have you dug into that? A little bit. I know about the Israeli study or the yeah. study from Israel. Yep. So there, is, and I, I think they might've actually done it in Florida, but they've used hard chambers. So the difference between hyperbarics that you might find, again, like at a chiropractor's office or a naturopath's office, or one of these more accessible soft chambers is that they only get down to 1.4 ATMs. That's about as much pressure as you can get. So if any, if there's any scuba divers out there, this will make sense to you really easily. One ATM is about 10 feet underwater. It's the pressure of that water. And the Israeli study that showed great benefits for people suffering with dementia, they used between four and five ATMs of pressure. So these were big, hard chambers that are much more expensive than what you can kind of typically find. Now, that being said, even though that research is kind of a, it's apples to, to oranges in terms of what you can get access to, the, the soft chambers and getting doing dives in those pretty regularly can really benefit people. And we see that post-stroke, that can be very, very beneficial. And even people suffering with chronic, just kind of complex chronic illness with um, maybe chronic fatigue syndrome or with um, fibromyalgia, they can get a lot of benefit from spending extra time in that pressurized, concentrated oxygen environment. Anything else to add? No, I'm just, I'm just so delighted to see comments about me. I'm just like, thank you. hello, everyone. I'm so, by, by the way, it's such an honor to work with Dr. Heather Sanderson. Uh, we met a little bit uh, almost a year ago, and it's been it's been so wonderful. And so I'm so glad that, that people are here getting your information. And if they came from um, my, my, my social media or, or my email list, I'm so glad. I cannot recommend Dr. Heather enough. She is 
Excellent. And so I'm so glad if, if, if you came through, through, through me or one of my social media platforms or for my email list, I'm so glad um, she's, she's just wonderful. And so I'm honored to be here with you in this. Uh, We're December. so grateful to have all of you here and so grateful to have Dr. Love here. We are, he and I are so aligned in our mission to get people access to this really empowering information that can change your life, can really transform. As I mentioned, Sean's experience. We also had, uh, Kate was in our class on, on Monday on our last coaching call. And we she was sharing her experience of seeing her mom who was in, she was tube fed for 10 years. Oh my gosh. I know just this absolutely torturous experience. She had dementia, se severe dementia for 10 years before that. So it was this 20 year long goodbye. And Kate's in her mid fifties with kids in, that are teenagers. And she was noticing brain fog. And of course that triggered a huge amount of PTSD of trauma and stress because she thought she was going in the same direction as her mom. She joined our coaching program and 12 weeks later, she has more energy than she has in decades. Her brain fog is gone and she has hope. She knows that she is empowered to make the decisions so that she doesn't go down the same path as her mom. And I want all of you to have access to that. If you are feeling the stress, that fear that you're going to end up like your mom or your dad who suffered so horribly with this disease, you don't have to. At the very least, we can delay the onset of that. And the time to start is now. So please, I want you to consider signing up for the coaching program because the longer we wait, the harder it is. And the coaching program, you know, we were over at Marama yesterday together. I was sharing with Dr. Love. We gave him a tour and, and got him a great meal over there. Oh, you were there today again, too. Well, I was right. there today again. It costs $15,000 a month to live at Marama. Our coaching program is $2,000. This is a small investment that will get you a massive priceless transformation. In 12 weeks, we see this over and over. We coach over 200 people. I, I think significantly more than 200 people at this point, Tyler can correct me, but we have supported people in this and we see transformations happen over and over again. It's not just hope, it's real tangible changes in MOCA scores. We had Jan improved her MOCA score from 21 to 26, which is normal in just a matter of months. What it takes is implementation and we are here to support you with that implementation. So questions for Dr. Love and I, I'm going to go to the Q and A. So are people signed up for your coaching program today? Yes, that is, okay. well, that's the plan. Fantastic. To have you back as another guest I, expert. So I, I'd love to offer a bonus session for, for that. We'll do a, this is a surprise to we'll, me. We'll, Tell me. So let's, let's do, let's do a live Q and A with me. I'll throw in an hour long session, a live Q and A with whoever's there. And we'll just talk about, it. so if you sign up today, you sign up now. So we got, we got a Mark who signs up today. Um, you will have a live Q and A with me. Um, and I'll just be answering your questions. And so we'll be in like a small intimate Zoom room, however many people sign up, and that'll just be a bonus that you get. Plus, I'll throw in a new product that I'm creating. It's my top 10 brain supplements. It's both an ebook and a video explaining the supplements. You will get that as well for free when you sign up today for Heather's, uh, for Dr. Sanderson's uh, coaching program. I, so I had no idea that this was going to happen. Thank you. Well, one thing that I've learned about Dr. Love over and over again is how generous he is and how knowledgeable and how much value he brings every time that we interact, every time that we discuss patients, all of this. It's just absolutely incredible. I couldn't be more grateful. And I know that you will get everything that I've seen him create has been so incredibly valuable to people. He actually gave me his lion's mane product when we were at a conference uh, together in Vegas. And you know, I, I don't like Vegas. It's it's so stimulating. Every There's smoke everywhere. I'm up late and I'm traveling and it's in December when I just want to be home with my family. And he gave me his lion's mane supplement. And it was like 30 minutes later, I, my mood was back. My energy was back. And I wanted to be there. I wanted to be engaged. And I started, I got more out of the experience because of the value that Dr. Love brought. And I, I have that over and over, that experience over and over again. So I feel one, just totally blessed and grateful to be collaborating with him at all. And also I'm going to cry because now he's giving away even more free stuff to our community. So thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you. All right. So... Let, should we get started on the Q and A here? Fantastic. All right. Um, People are asking about the coaching program. Uh, yes. I saw a specific. I don't. 
I don't have much information about your coaching program. Tyler has a ton of information about our coaching program and she's going to share it, but let me take okay, everyone through it just briefly because we have Dr. Love here. So I want to get all, I want to just get you all the There's value. Book. Of have having they, have him. they gotten the book yet? Have they gotten an opportunity to buy the book? Yes, you can buy the book. And if you join the coaching program, of course, we're going to send you some books and you will also get access to very immediately within the next 24 hours, you'll get access to the workbook. So this workbook will is a 69 page step-by-step -step guide to how to implement all of the information that's in the book. And then we're going to team up with you in May. This is starting soon. We start May 20th. We, Tyler and I are going to be there and Dr. Love's going to have a guest appearance. Yay. Um, and we're going to take you through all this. So your hand's going to be held. You're going to have the benefit of community, which I cannot overstate the benefit of community. We were actually talking about isolation yeah. and the dangers of loneliness recently. So you get community, priceless community. You get- Can I, can okay. I share something about your workbook? So, so Dr. Sanderson spent a ton of resources writing this great book. And then she doubled that to do the workbook. So this workbook is really, really important and it's very special and it's really powerful. So when you read the book, definitely read the workbook and just understand that that workbook was not, e that was not uh, easy to do. There was a lot of work and, and strategizing for her to be able to put that together. And she's in the perfect position to do that because she's helping people implement this day to day at Marama and in her clinic. And so it's just, I want you to know how valuable both of those are together, both the book that's readable and shareable, and then the workbook for those who want to take it and implement it. And it, I'm really proud of this workbook. Um, it, it really has come together nicely. And it's really, I owe it to Kate Hanley, my collaborator, who's really done the vast majority of the heavy lifting here. But what's in both the workbook and the book and the coaching program is everything that not only I have learned, but what Tyler has learned, because she's done this because she's been right here with me the whole time. Tyler, can you turn your face on? Can we see you for a minute? Um, she has been with us for years, helping to implement, helping patients to implement. And she's there to answer your questions. Here, we'll, I'll show you her face right here. So that's me. You know what I look like. You get I was, like, I was like, she looks like you. <laughs> you get 12 coaching sessions with me. But even better, you get a kickoff call with Tyler. And she's going to help you make this really actionable for you. So that, you know, everybody's got their unique situation, their unique dynamics and their family or their constraints, whatever's coming up. Somebody mentioned, what if I'm in chronic pain? What if I'm, what if I have some disability? How do I get the exercise? You're going to strategize with Tyler one-on-one -on -one so that you can get the most out of this. And we're going to have that this brainstorming session every week for 12 weeks, where you're going to make sure that you know how to implement this. That's where the rubber meets the road. You only get the benefit of all of these ideas and of all of our experience from Arama and the clinic here at Solceri and from our the coaching that we've done for over 200 people. You only get the benefit if you put it into practice. So You'll get access to a private Facebook group where you can put questions on there at 1 a.m. if they come up. And there's a great, every coaching client we've ever had is in that private Facebook group. So all the people who've been doing this for two years, three years, you're going to get the answers from them. These really tangible, amazingly valuable answers from them right away. And there are things that come up that I'm not an expert in, right? Like who, what's the best attorney to get for, to make sure that I'm getting the resources through my pension plan or whatever it is. We have these interesting questions that come up that I'm not the best person to ask, but there is somebody else in the group. We have this phenomenal one person who knew how to use the system to get as many resources possible for her dad. And another woman who she was an interior designer, helping people figure out how to age in their homes. So she helped people figure out not just the grab bars and the, the, the rugs and stuff, but really think through how to age in your own home and optimize your house for that process. So you're going to get instant access to an 11 module training course, caregiver training course, also helpful for prevention. And that you'll get immediately when you purchase the course. And those are, those are video recorded. So you can have access to them right away. You can watch them at your leisure and whenever you want. And then of course, the most important part, 
is you join the community. You get the community. You are around people who get it, who understand what you're trying to do, who believe in this process, not just because you know it's something to believe in, but because it works, because they've seen it work, because they are committed to the process. And so this course is over $5,000 in value, but really it's not about the dollars. It's about that priceless transformation that really makes a dent in the trajectory of how you age. This is about aging well, aging gracefully, having a more fulfilling, rewarding life in that, in that last phase of it. And so we are giving this away for $24.97 today. Please jump in now. And you're getting these and you get bonuses. bonuses. When, you, when, you, when you get today, when you invest in your health today, you get a free one hour uh, group coaching call with me, which is basically going to be me answering your questions. And so I'm going to be as helpful as I can um, in, in, in giving you some tools to help uh, slow down aging. Uh, for those who are interested in weight loss, we've got some powerful weight loss tools that are also great for the brain, as well as supplements that are great for your brain. Plus, you get my, my program, my top 10 brain supplements. It's both a video and a um, and a PDF. And so you get both the printed version and then you get the you get the the video that explains why each of those are really great for your brain, uh, what my favorite brands are. That'll save you a ton of time, right? Because I'll tell you what, what the good brands are, what to look for in a great supplement, how to use them, and so forth. And so um, so you get both of those bonuses when you when you uh, when you join the coaching program today. I'm so excited. I'm so delighted. We should just have you back every time. It's just so amazing. I'm, I'm totally so out in Southern <laughs> California. This is great. I love it. We're so lucky. All right, so I'm going to jump to the Q&A and answer any other questions that are coming up. What is our opinion about methylene blue? Do you have much experience with methylene blue? What are your thoughts? I ordered it and I didn't want to make it because it was going to make a huge mess in my house. And so I, the, my understanding is that it potentially is very good. It's kind of a pain in the butt to do. And so once they figure out how to make it more convenient, I think it'll be accessible to a lot more people. I haven't really taken it myself. I know people who do take it that love it. Um, that's that's as, that's as much as I know. So what I've learned um, from using methylene blue in our clinical practice is one, as you mentioned, it's messy, but it also interferes with lab work. So you don't want to be taking methylene blue and then do a test and have it get kicked back from the lab company. So that can just be frustrating and create more work. And so the other thing, methylene blue gets used for two reasons. One, for infections, for chronic infections, and two, for mitochondrial reboot. It hasn't been very effective, in my opinion, and my clinical experience with infections. So I will sometimes use it for mitochondrial reboot, but my preference is to use NAD by IV or sub-Q injection. Now, if you don't have access to that, you can do oral methylene blue. I don't see it pack as much of a punch as we see with NAD, niacinamide adenine dinucleotide. So I, my preference is more towards the NAD. I hope that answers your question. Okay, from Adrian, sorry to ask again, but I wasn't able to see the first two presentations. I've missed out on getting the keto PDF. No problem, Adrian. You should have access to all of the replays and in the uh, follow-up emails. And actually also Tyler can put the PDF in the chat today. So hopefully you're here, still here, Adrian. We're gonna get you that keto diet guide. You can also go to the soulseri.com website, type in your email address, and we um, will just send you that very quickly. From ICW, are there any doctors in Israel that use Dale Bredesen's work? There's nobody I know personally. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm not connected with the community. Uh, what, what, what is our community? And what is our community? People who are reversing, who are helping reverse Alzheimer's. I, I'm not connected with, with doctors in Israel. So I, I just know about the research. I don't know anyone um, off the top of my head either. What you might want to do is either reach out to Apollo or become a, a Recode uh, subscriber. And then you will have access to all of the doctors. You'll know who all the doctors are everywhere around the world. I know that Dr. Bredesen has trained over 2000 doctors from almost every country on the planet. Like it's incredible what he's done and the dent he's made in this disease. I'm so privileged to work with him. And um, I, I, most of the doctors um, who have done the work of training with him are very great, well-trained, high-quality functional medicine doctors. So from Wendy Woods, I have severe reactions, transient ischemic events, to much exercise due to my long COVID. I need ideas for gradual introduction into exercise programs. 
uh, tennis or pickleball, get started playing a fun sport and you can play it at your speed. Um, I live at a, a place in Southern Florida where I'm probably one of the younger residents. Most of the residents are probably 65 plus. I watch them play tennis at a speed that works for them. And so that's a fun way to get started. Tennis or pickleball, you can play at a slow speed or walking. Get started. If you're not doing early morning sunshine with like, if you're not getting early morning sunshine with a morning walk, you're missing out on free health. Like, like the sun in the morning is so great for setting your circadian rhythm. So I would do that with some walking and then build up from walking to maybe playing a sport and what feels good for you. And then, you know, if you want to work with a professional, you can work with a physical therapist or a trainer uh, to to help you that that would, I would say start slowly and make sure it's fun. It's it's hard when it's slow and painful. Slow and painful is hard. Um, slow and fun can be really good. I couldn't agree more. One another thing to consider, Wendy, is maybe even just approximating exercise. So if if you're getting these events after even walking, maybe considering a sauna so that you're getting your heart rate up, you're getting blood flowing, but you don't have those those events afterwards. So I don't know exactly where you are on the spectrum spectrum of tolerance, but sometimes we'll start that with really chronically ill patients just to get some of the benefits of exercise without having to do the exercise. Um, so hopefully that gives you a couple ideas of where to start. But if you can walk, start walking, start walking, get that movement, get outside. Maybe you can walk with someone and that'll make it more enjoyable. You can have a chat with them. So those are phenomenal ideas. Thank you. I had mentioned exogenous ketones in a previous session. And on the internet, there are a lot of scams. Oh, can we recommend a brand? What do you think of? So someone actually sent me um, some ketones to try and they tasted awful. And I was, I had a little bit of brain fog at the time. I was kind of tired and grumpy. Within 10 minutes of drinking that and like listening to some fun music, I felt amazing. I thought, oh my gosh, this stuff is great. I don't remember the brand. So, so maybe one of the things to filter for is, does it taste really bad? Oh my gosh. Like, I, I had never tried ketones that tasted good. In my opinion, they taste like gasoline. Yeah, and so yeah. we're not really picking ketones for taste. They do come sometimes in capsule form, but the best ones come in liquid form and you can get ketone salts or ketone esters. Ketone salts are like beta hydroxybutyrate. They come in powders or capsules and Tyler can put in the chat, look in the chat for the perfect ketones. That's the brand that we typically recommend these days. And then if you want to try the ketone esters, there are um, a handful of good brands that I want to get you in a follow-up email because um, I'm not remembering them off the top of my head. I guess I need to drink some more of them so I can remember it. They taste so bad that I don't tend to use them unless I'm having trouble getting into ketosis and then I'll add them. But I have the same experience. I feel clearer, more articulate, more on it when I'm in ketosis and those ketone drinks help me get there. So I hope that that is helpful. Um, the perfect ketones is a great place to start, but I also don't want to dissuade you from getting the ketone esters because those where ketone salts will get you into ketosis, like mild ketosis or up over one, those ketone esters, if you can tolerate them, they can get your ketone levels up to three and four and really make That's a the liquid. That's the liquid. Okay. So my, this tasted so bad. As soon as I drank it, I like eat a, uh, like a piece of gum. So I drank it and immediately put a piece of gum in my mouth. It was, it was that rough. Um, but the benefit was pretty quick. It was really powerful. Juvescence. This is the one that I have had. It, this would be an entertaining show to watch us drink these right now because they oh, taste pain. so bad. I won't do that to you. You've been too kind. So Juvescence is this other brand of ketone esters. These are the liquids that really help get your ketone levels up high, if that's what you're looking for. So from Catherine Schultz, if one has mild cognitive decline due to multiple etiologies like chronic tick-borne disease, what would you, would you expect the decline to resolve when the infections have been eradicated? So... You want to take this one? So Catherine, what we've seen is that it's not about addressing one thing. Like you mentioned already, multiple etiologies, which I want to kind of like do a little happy dance when you say that, because this is the paradigm shift that we are trying to make happen. It's not about one cause. It's about multiple things. And so we want to see if you have a tick-borne disease, was there something else that maybe even made you a, a, 
a better candidate for that tick-borne disease to take hold in your body, right? Are you nutrient deficient? Are there stressors? Was there a traumatic brain injury? What's your blood sugar doing? What is? What about your um, toxic burden? Is there something that has generally made your system more vulnerable to dementia and tick-borne disease? Now, if we can take this Bredesen approach and use this multimodal, we can address multiple etiologies. I, if you're already noticing cognitive decline, I recommend diving in fully. Don't wait, do all of it. I know it's a big investment of time and money and effort, but we see over and over again, it is so well worth it to be healthy, right? Without our health, what do we have? And so if you can find a Bredesen trained provider, get that help as soon as possible. And yes, you know, what we've seen in our, what we saw in our clinical trial that we published in 2023 was that 75 per 74% of our 23 participants, so 17 of them improved. Some of them had tick-borne illness. And also in Dr. Bredesen's case, in, in their study, they had 25 participants and in nine months, 84% of them improved. Some of them had tick-borne illness, but we weren't just addressing the tick-borne illness we were addressing all of the etiologies. So great question. And um, let us know if we can be supportive helping you find someone or, or getting the help that you need. If anyone has um, ME or CFS, chronic fatigue syndrome, significant post-exertional malaise, disequilibrium, and they can often be bedridden, what recommendations would you make for exercise? This is outside of my specialty, my thought. <laughs> so, you know, we have a, a patient, a resident who's been at Marama for a long time, and she's in a wheelchair. And we got that the exercise bike that she uses with her arms. So it's really, it's about what can you do? What kind of movement can you do? Another thing, I mentioned the, the infrared sauna and that being a way to sort of approximate the benefits of exercise, get that blood flow going, move things around. You could also think about a chi machine. So a chi machine is where you lie on the floor and you put your feet in this kind of wobbly device and it shakes your body. So you get some movement in your system, but you don't have to get that post-exertional malaise. I know I've worked with patients over the years where even just washing their hair, taking a shower, they can only do it a couple of days a week because it takes so much energy out of them. So I get where you're coming from and, um, and there are ways to get started, but I think the most important thing with that is seeing a functional medicine, well-trained doctor who can identify why it's happening. Because once you can start unraveling that, now we don't have to worry about not being able to exercise. You can get back to it. So there was a question about lion's mane. So I know Dr. Well, Love is the expert on lion's mane. So let's go back to that one. Good. I'm glad because I, I, I have nothing to say about the culture testing. I don't know what that what that's talking about. Oh, and brain tap. So lion's mane from Sharon Schusterman. Lion's mane recommendations. So first, uh, so in full disclosure, I sell a lion's mane supplement. Um, and so first, I'm going to tell you just a little bit about the benefits of lion's mane and then, then what to look for in a good lion's mane supplement. So first of all, the benefits of lion's mane. Uh, it actually depends. So I, I was sharing this with Dr. Sanderson. She said, well, I had this benefit. She talked about mood um, uh, uh, in studies. It improves memory. It improves mood. It reduces depression and anxiety in a 30-day study where they gave you a lion's mane cookies. Such a cool study design, right? I know. Actually. Cookies, what? So it reduces depression and anxiety, improves mood, improves memory, improves sleep, and increases a growth factor in the brain called BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. That's a growth factor in the brain that facilitates the growth of new brain cells and new neural connections. Exercise also increases BDNF. So those are some of the benefits of lion's mane. I like to take it before bed or I take it before um, if I'm feeling stressed or if I'm going to do something um, and I want to be in a really good mood. So I took it before my cousin's wedding because I wanted to be in a really good mood. Um, and so what to look for to great lion's mane supplement. These, this also applies to supplements, generally speaking. Number one is third party tested. That means an independent company has tested the supplement for quality and safety. Very, very important. Number two is GMP certified. That stands for good manufacturing practices. Uh, again, that mean, that's the certification to show that the manufacturer is doing things right. Uh, third is the right dose. The right dose of lion's mane is approximately 250 to 500 milligrams a day. You can go higher. You don't necessarily want to start higher. Some of these doses are way too big. They're, they're, they're 3,000 3, milligrams. You want to start there. It's 250 to 500 milligrams, that's a good starting place for a healthy adult. For children, if you're going to give them lion's mane, check, of course, check with your pediatrician first. You can open up capsules, start, start slowly, slowly with them. 
Um, and then lastly is, is a money back guarantee that it's really important that when you buy supplements from a manufacturer, from, for, from, from someone that has a money back guarantee, because that means they stand behind their product. Um, and so if you'd like to, so I have a great lines made supplement that's third party tested, GMP certified, uh, comes to the six month money back guarantee and it's the right dose. If you go to robertlove.net, you can find it there. Um, and so that's, that's my little spiel on lines, man. You certainly don't need to get it from me. There's, there's multiple good lines mains out there. Mine's a great quality one and a great, a great price. I think we have buy one, get three free sale right now. Um, but definitely look for third party tested GMP certified. That's a really, really important standard in, uh, in the lion's mane supplement. And I've personally taken Dr. Love's lion's mane. I personally have benefited from it. And so I can, I can testify that yes, it is a great quality product and at a really great price. So um, yeah, go to robertlove.net is where you can see it. That one. All right. So testing and cultures that I recommend for diagnosing the culprit of chronic sinus infections for years. I was positive for Mark Hans in 2021 and concerned this has caused my neurological issues and hope it's reversible. Sherry, we have seen lots of this and absolutely go back and get that Mark Hans test. Make sure that you test for biofilms and fungus. So whoever you got that original Mark Hans test from, go get it again. And Tyler, do you remember the name of the company? I'm not even remembering the name of the lab company because we always call it the Mark Hans test. And I said Mark Hans plus fungus and biofilm. Get that. When you do the test, it's the nasal swab. It's like that one of those old school COVID tests. It's terrible. But do it anyways. Figure out what, what's living up there. And then a couple of things to do. So I know from Richie Shoemaker's work, the, the bag spray, which is just a spray, was popularized to address sinus infections, especially these long-term chronic ones. So I want you to use a sinus rinse, the Neomed sinus rinse, and you can put a little silver. Don't, don't use too much, just per eight ounces, use like two to three drops of silver or biocidin is another good one. Put that, use distilled water typically. That can go through your sinuses and it's going to get some of that out. The other thing that's a really great tip for getting rid of chronic sinus infections is kimchi juice. So you take a Q-tip, put it in the juice of the kimchi and then put it in one nostril, turn it over, don't double dip, use the juice on the other side and put some kimchi in there. Kimchi has the microbes that are best for your sinuses. And so you're gonna repopulate, just like your gut has good and bad gut bugs, your sinuses has good and have good and bad bugs too. And kimchi is the specific one. Now don't go find the supplement that's super expensive that says it's the sinus bugs and then swallow it. That's going into your gut, not into your sinuses. Take the Q-tip, six bucks, go get some kimchi and put it in your sinuses. The other thing, is um, if it's fungal, you probably want to, you want to address the fungus, right? Don't skip on addressing the fungus. Also don't skip on addressing the biofilms if they're there and make sure you don't have a dental infection that keeps creating a sinus infection, right? If you have a dental infection that is maybe behind a root canal or something like that, go see a biological dentist and rule that out. I've seen that too many times where someone has chronic sinus infections and it's actually a dental infection that's just draining into the sinuses. So I want to pause for a moment. Do you see the wealth of knowledge that Dr. Sanderson has? Like this, this is phenomenal. And so you get access to her in, in the group coaching program where you can actually ask her questions and like, like get help with these things in, in a small group setting. Like how valuable is that? Like just knowing that, oh my gosh, my sinus infection caused by a dental infection, that would have saved you months of time plus probably a lot of money and, and improve your health so just do you, do you see the wealth of like like please comment in the chat if you understand just how valuable her knowledge and experience is i don't have this experience i'm not a clinician i don't i don't work with patients directly um and and, and so she has she's really able to help you on such a deep and personal level with with, with all these things and that's so our goal we had jan was in our coaching class uh this actually she's been joining us for i think nine months uh and she was saying how they got a sleep study done because we talked about it as a group she never would have thought to talk about it or ask and that is what made the difference for her partner i mean phenomenal difference crazy difference and it was because they showed up every wednesday and they asked questions she also said she comes she's great she comes and she's got a list of questions that she's been keeping track of all week long and she doesn't care what the agenda I have is and that's exactly how I want it that those courses that that class is for you it is your time to sit there and ask me all the questions that you have pick my brain and get the absolute maximum value so that you can shift the trajectory of your health and that of your loved one you can optimize and get that fulfilling amazing 
last like sunset of your life. It can be so wonderful. We can continue to look forward to each and every day. I had that last week. It was amazing. This woman, one of our first residents of Marama, she's been on the Bredesen protocol for 10 years. She's one of the original people and her family notices. They're like, wow, your mom's doing great. Wow. She's doing great. She's engaged. She's present. She's interacting with us. And they were expecting her to just go downhill and get worse and worse and worse and probably have passed away by now but she's been doing this. She's been implementing and they all get to have her around because of it. It's amazing. So I have a question about the kimchi. Um, is that good just for healthy people? Can I like, should I, or if someone takes an antibiotic, should they just be doing, doing that? Like how often should I be put? And can I rub it in my, can I rub the kimchi like in my nose or I need to stick it up here? Do I need to like, do I need to, yeah. Or do I just rub it in my nostrils? Yeah. Um, no, they're little bugs. They're critters. So they're going to, they're going to crawl where they need to go, but you can just dab the juice in, in your nostrils. You don't have to go up as far as like the really food. spicy juice. doesn't have to be super spicy. You can get the mildest version. They all have a little bit of spice, but you can get the mildest version. Um, hopefully it's like wasabi. It just clears you out anyways. Um, what I do notice is that yes, if you've been on antibiotics, do it for about two weeks. If you've done, especially if you're doing antimicrobial sinus rinses, do it for two weeks afterwards, because most people, it takes about two weeks to repopulate. But after that, if you're not doing any anti antimicrobial, if you're not doing, taking antibiotics, if you're not doing silver or biocidin, if you're not doing anything to get rid of the bugs, then after two weeks, you've probably gotten your maximum benefit. You're not going to continue getting benefit by doing that every day forever. It's going to, those bugs, they get in there and they grow, they live, you've populated. Fantastic. I'm totally buying some kimchi. I'm, I'm okay. doing it. All right. What if someone can't walk for very long, maybe 10 minutes very slowly due to post-exertional malaise? How would I manage that for a resident or someone at home? So I think I shared, I hope that that is a great starting point to either do something in bed with your arms, get some movement, get in a sauna, maybe even for less than 10 minutes, not too long, but heat up. Maybe it's a bath or a shower can also help if you don't have access to a sauna, but heat up so that you get that increased heart rate, you get the circulation, and then figure out why you have post-exertional malaise and chronic fatigue. Those are treatable issues. So figure that out with a well-trained functional medicine provider. Exercise is part of a healthy lifestyle. If you can't do it, if you don't have access to it, we've got to figure out why. Hydro hydrogenized, bleh, do you know how to say that word? I, was, I think you said it correctly, hydrogenized. Hydro, hyd, yep, hydrogenized. So people have been talking to me about this. I haven't read any of the research. They, they claim the research is very exciting. I haven't read it, uh, but it looks like it's very promising for dementia and potentially uh, heart disease and many different chronic diseases. I don't understand the science of why, and I haven't read the research, but that's something that's on my to, to read list is, is about hydronized water. My clinical experience, uh, I've had patients who have purchased the, that water or the, the, um, the machine to get your water hydrogenized and no one has had it be a real game changer. So for what it's worth, I haven't done it personally. I don't recommend it because nobody has told me that it's life-changing. Um, but I, I think there is compelling research and that's part of why people, people try it out. Um, this is a great question from Elizabeth. Is it ever too late for someone? Are they too old or too unmotivated to get the benefit from this? What do you think? If they're unmotivated, if they're not willing to do it, then there's, there's nothing to do and that I'm, I'm, I'm okay with someone who's unmotivated and not willing to change their diet do their exercise. If they just want to kind of continue going, that's what they want to do. They're a sovereign human being. Sure. But if they're willing to go for a walk in the morning, if they're willing to eat mushrooms a couple of times a week, if they're willing to just get outside and get some sunshine, if they're willing to drink a little bit less alcohol, if they can make some change that can come into more change. It's never too late to be helpful. It's never too late to get healthy. Um, but they have to, they do have to want to make some change. Some people don't want to be healthy. I've talked to people who are is addicted to nicotine. I'm like, look, this, this thing helps. And they're like, no, I'm not interested. I've talked to obese people. I said, look, if you make these changes, this could actually be helpful. They're like, I'm not interested. So they have to want to change is my experience. You can't, I, I've noticed you can't change someone else unless they want to be changed. But if you're willing to do one thing, whether it's eat one healthy thing, whether it's uh, spend 10 minutes outside every day in the morning, getting early morning sunshine, whether you're willing to turn off the television an hour before bed so you can get better sleep. If you're willing to do one thing, 
then you can get better. That and makes then, sense. Yeah. Exactly. So our this is a really important question, right? Is what do I do if someone is too old, not motivated, unwilling? What I want you to do if you're related to them is get tested and take this on yourself. Be the model, be the person. Instead of, I see some people, they're so focused on their dad or their mom or someone older than them or even their spouse. And if it's, if you feel like it's too late for them, if they feel like it's too late for them, focus on you. This, this gets me emotional sometimes because at the beginning of my career in this in 2017, there were people who were very late stage who came to me and I did not have hope. I thought they were too old and too unmotivated and there was nothing that I could do and nothing that they could do. And then I watched them get better. And so I will never tell anyone that there's not hope again, because there were people I didn't have hope for who proved me wrong, who showed me that there was hope and that they could recover quality of life, that they could recover language, that they would recover things that people had said were impossible. Now, it's not a guarantee. It is much harder. It takes much more effort. It takes much more resource, but it, there is always room for hope. So the oxygen machine from Amazon. I don't, I don't know anything about that. Boost. So oh, boost oxygen. Anything? Just search boost, B-O-O-S-T, oxygen. It's not a machine. It's like a canister. It looks, it's a metal okay. bottle. You can't fly with it um, because it's compressed oxygen. Which is too bad because then you could take it to elevation, which would be really nice. You have yes. to have it shipped there. Yes, yeah, so you got, or you can often buy it in, in Colorado. You can buy it in the grocery store or yes. in the, um, in the pharmacy section. Uh, yeah, for people who are struggling with, um, I'm sure in New Mexico, places that are high altitude probably have this readily available, but it can help even at sea level to get extra oxygen, particularly as we age. Can exercise increase white matter in the brain? Great question, Beth. Do so exercise is one of the very best things you can do for your brain. Exercise is med medicine for your brain. It increases growth factors in the brain. It gets fresh. It gets it gets fresh blood and nutrients for the brain. It improve it improves sleep. It improves. Uh, it re helps reduce anxiety and depression. Exercise is just fantastic for pretty much every your whole body, including your brain. Highly recommend exercise for the brain. Absolutely. And what Dr. Brennison, his research paper with Cat Tubes was the lead author on that. It was published in July of 2022 in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease. And they did a study very similar to ours, the one that we did here at Solceri. They did a nine month intervention on people with measurable cognitive impairment with MOCA scores down to 19. And they included exercise. And in fact, they had either physical therapists or personal trainers who worked with all of their, their participants and 84% of them got better. Now, they also measured white and gray matter and they got bigger. Their the exercise has been shown to increase brain size certainly reduce brain atrophy. And what they saw in, in the tubes trial and the Bredesen trial is that there was a reduction in the expected atrophy of the hippocampus. So atrophy means shrinking, literally brain shrinking and different parts of the brain shrink at different rates, but we're expected to have some atrophy or shrinking of the brain as we age. And the hippocampus, they slowed the rate of shrinking of the hippocampus. For the people with Alzheimer's, they expect that to actually go more rapidly. But in this group that applied the Bredesen approach, it slowed more, more slowly, and they had actual increases in both gray and white matter. Really impressive, amazing stuff. I want you to get the benefit of it. So get exercising. Were we able to conduct a study with the data that we gathered from the patients at Marama and possibly publish in an academic paper? Yeah, uh, great question. There's levels of internal review board. We've done a clinical trial here at my office with patients at home, and we do collect data at Marama, but it was not IRB approved. We haven't gone through the process of fundraising for a big clinical trial. They're very expensive. They require a lot of manpower, but we, I can share with you from our Clear Mind Center in Kansas, the first five people have been there over six months. We opened in April of uh, 2023, a year ago, and five people have now been there more than six months and four of them improved their MOCA scores. Measurable, noticeable increases in their cognitive capacity at uh, the Clear Mind Center, where they're doing exactly the same as we're doing at Marama. At Marama, we have data. Most people end up with improvements in their MOCA 
Not everyone, not everyone. It depends on, as Dr. Love mentioned, motivation. Are they gonna show up? Are they gonna do it? Are they gonna put the plan to work? And there's, there's many variables, right? People go through stressors, they lose a partner, they get sick. So things come up, life happens. Uh, but for the vast majority of participants and patients and residents at Marama, what we see is improvement in their cognition and improvement in their health generally. How does sleep deprivation cause short-term memory loss and can it be reversed? So we need sleep to form. So this is a great question. We need sleep to form new memories. Sleep is when we wire up new memories. If you don't sleep for 48 hours, you're not going to remember what happens. So when, my, when I see my friends at Burning Man, I say, look, if you want to remember Burning Man, you actually need to sleep. So not sleeping is not a good idea. So number one, that's when you wire up memories. Number two, uh, sleep is when you get a literal brainwashing with the glymphatic system. This was discovered, I think, in 2012. Um, it, it's, it's pretty new in science and basically shows that as we sleep, um, more cerebral spinal fluid flows into the brain and rinses out plaques and toxins. Your brain gets a literal brainwash at night. Very, very important. So if you don't sleep, you don't get that. Uh, anyone notice the headache after not sleeping? Uh, my guess is that's your brain saying, stop that. Don't do that. Me not sleeping, your brain is saying, don't do that because I'm kind of hurt now because it's got it's got double the toxins in it because you, it didn't get that, that, that washing of the brain. So those are two ways. Can it be reversed? You can recover, sure, by getting good sleep and getting good ex exercise, sleep, early morning, like get, get your morning sunshine, live a healthy life, eat a good diet, take some supplements if that's helpful, read rather than watch television, do these things, you will, you will recover. Uh, you can improve your brain function, absolutely. Um, so short sleep deprivation, very dangerous, um, accidents, accidents greatly increase with sleep deprivation and accidents falls are one of the number one things we need to look out for as we age because a broken hip or, or just any sort of injury takes a lot longer to heal. And, um, they're, they're a big darn deal and you want to avoid them, um, avoid them like the plague. So please get your sleep, prioritize your sleep. The really successful people in the world today are prioritizing their sleep. That's, that's, uh, there's very few people at the top of the, uh, corporate ladder that are sleeping four hours a night. They're, they're getting eight or nine hours plus exercise. They've figured out that the optimal health is necessary for optimal brain performance. So I personally am an absolute wreck if I do not get enough sleep and I need between eight and nine hours. If I start getting seven hours, like a few nights in a row, I just don't function. Now, there's also really great science that supports this. What we see is that people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, well before Alzheimer's is starting to be a problem or starting to be present, even before they're noticing memory changes, there is accumulation after just one night of sleep deprivation, there's accumulation of amyloid, measurable accumulation of amyloid that we associate as a causative factor with Alzheimer's in the conventional world. Of course, we know that there's more causes from our perspective, but amyloid, this, this indication that the brain is, have, is going through a neurodegenerative process happens after one night of sleep deprivation. That's crazy. We have to be uh, prioritizing sleep. You talked about the benefits of deep sleep. REM sleep is also significant because REM sleep, this rapid eye movement, this is when we're dreaming. This is when we consolidate memories. This is when we take an emotionally charged event that happened during the day and we process it so that tomorrow when we remember it, we don't have that same stress. We don't increase our cortisol and shoot up adrenaline the way that we might have yesterday. I don't know if you have experienced this, but I know I was sleep deprived this week. I had to fly to Kansas on Sunday and fly back on Monday. And I went to bed after midnight and I got up at, it was the equivalent of 4.30 AM on Pacific time. And I was sleep deprived. I felt jittery. I felt anxious and I was irritable. I was more emotionally charged now. I did my meditation, I breathed through it, I ate really healthy, I stayed hydrated, but I knew it wasn't good for me, I can't do that, I can't keep doing that, right? No one can sustain that. So many of you struggle, with, I, I know the, the question is always, I know I need sleep, but I can't. I can't fall asleep or I can't stay asleep or my bladder wakes me up. There's all these reasons why not. And in the coaching program, we have an entire day, an entire 90 minutes. I said 12, 60 minute sessions with me, but Tyler will attest. It's always 90 minutes. We always go over. We always answer tons of questions and we spend an entire session talking about sleep, what to do to get to sleep, stay asleep, improve the quality of your sleep, how to measure it potentially, if that's of interest to you. Sleep is one of those things. I've had two patients in the past year who have had MOCA scores that go from eight single digit MOCA scores, advanced cognitive decline and diagnosed Alzheimer's 
who have recovered memory and gone up almost double, one to 15 and one to 16 in just a matter of months because they started tr treating their sleep deprivation and their sleep apnea. Very, very, very important. And I suspect that there are many cases, if I've seen two of them in the past year, there are many, many cases of untreated sleep apnea causing dementia. So important. So how much boost oxygen? Yeah, when you get boost, so the question about boost oxygen, how much boost oxygen to use after a workout, uh, just take a deep breath and hold it and then exhale. And then if you want to take another deep, breathe it until you feel good. I usually do about three breaths. Uh, you don't want to be like huffing it. You know what? Oh, oh, don't. Yeah. So don't, don't just, just don't just breathe it constantly. Do like three or five breaths max and then pause, and, but just, just do enough to where you feel good. Um, if that makes sense, you'll, you'll know, you'll, you'll, you'll figure it out once, once you get the bottle, do it, do it to the amount that feels right for you. I wouldn't do more than five breaths um, at any one time. Great advice. Great advice. Okay. So I've been advised that hyperbaric oxygen therapy can cause cataract. Have you seen this happen? Are you familiar with that? No. It's pressure. Pressure is pressure. Uh, I think more of glaucoma as being a pressure um, issue in, in the eyes, but uh, I've never heard that hyperbarics can cause cataracts. If, Naomi, if you want to send us a paper that shows about that, and I can be advising patients if they are at risk for cataracts, I actually have some patients who have cataracts and are considering surgery. And now I'm going to look it up and make sure that I'm not recommending H, uh, hyperbaric oxygen for them. And if that's the case, credible source for methylene blue. I haven't, I haven't bought it, so I don't know. We get it from compounding pharmacies um, and many of them make it. It often changes. They don't continue making it or maybe they don't have it in stock, but usually we get it from a compounding pharmacy, either oral or IV. So can they, so can patients get it from doctors? Is that, is that something that's prescribed from a compound pharmacy? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I didn't know that was a, a pres also a prescription. I've just known as a, as a supplement, as a supplement. Yeah. Can you get it over the counter? Can you get it from Amazon? You can get it on Amazon. Oh, anyway. Yeah. I had no idea. We, um, we, I have only ever prescribed it to patients to get through a compounding pharmacy. So from Ellen, what would be the hyperbaric chamber option? Or is there something, an alternative? My mom has anxiety and can't get in the chamber. Yeah, so people who have um, ear issues and they can't, they can't adjust to the pressure, like if they get on airplanes and that really irritates them, then the hyperbaric chamber isn't gonna work. If somebody is claustrophobic, they can't get into a hyperbaric chamber and have it zipped. If it's not zipped, you're not gonna get pressure. It's just all the, all the pressure is gonna be released. So that is really important that you can tolerate it. So if you can't, that's where EWOT comes into play. You exercise and have the mask on. Not everybody can tolerate the mask, but they can also do the nasal cannula and you breathe, you breathe concentrated oxygen at about 80% or you get the boost option. So many options. So we can make this work. Uh, uh, Leanne, thank you so much. We're so happy that you're here and so grateful that you're enjoying what we have to say here. Um, and you will get, because you're here, you got an email with the link, you will get an email to the replay. So you can watch the whole thing again if you want, no problem. From Beth, do you have any experience using the LifeWave, LifeWave patch to stimulate stem cells for dementia? I've heard about a patch for stem cells. I haven't read any research on it and I haven't used it myself. So mixed reviews from around LifeWave. I've had patients who have used it. Some have great experiences and swear by it. And then they start selling it. So there's like a multi-level marketing sort of piece to that, which always makes me a little nervous. But um, I've had patients say that it's been a game changer for them. So worth trying. I think that the cost, I mean, the cost of stem cells can be tens of thousands of dollars. Easily, it's, yeah. yeah, easily. And so if you can stimulate stem cells a different way then and, and see how that does, uh, then that's a much more affordable way to sort of dabble in that stem cell space. Do we have a Marama residence here in Wichita, Kansas? Gail, I was there this week. Yes, in Wichita. The Clear Mind Center is in Wichita. And um, it, it they are doing such a phenomenal job. Gosh, I, I'm just so proud of the team it's led by Pam. She's the RN there. And like I mentioned, in Wichita, we, we are seeing incredible results. People are getting better. Please um, reach out to them or reach out to us, Tyler, do you, quickly. Do you, know the, do you know the phone number so we can give them the phone yes. number for that? 760. 505-4185 is, oh wait, oh gosh, I just got that wrong. 
maramaexperience.com for sure. Tyler, if you happen to know the number over there. It, it's called it's called Marama. maramaexperience.com. Um, that will get you to Leah or Carrie and they can help you um, set up a time to talk to Pam and make sure it's a good fit. But yeah, 760-505-8145. I think I mixed that up. So yeah, we're, we'd love to explore if that will serve you or your loved one. 8145? I'll put that in. yeah. Great. And then how many, how many, you only have a few beds open. Yeah, between the two facilities, between here in, in San Diego and in Wichita, Kansas, we've got six beds available. So uh, if if you are interested, please reach out because with the book coming out next month and with kind of this post summit, we've had we've had a bunch of people sign up and those beds are going fast. So please, please reach out quickly. It's a process. Yeah, you're gonna have to figure out how to deal with the, the overflow after the book. Like, well, it'll be a good problem to have if more people are getting access to the Bredesen approach absolutely. and getting an immersive experience where you know we do it for you and make it less challenging. From Naomi, we're gonna take a couple more questions here. Thank you all for being here. It's such, it's so humbling to have hundreds of people show up, stay, have these conversations with us. Some of these are really hard conversations. Like should I give up or how much effort do I put into this? And these are, these are real, I love the, I, one of the best things about my job is that I get to create these containers for us to have these real conversations, find solutions, figure out what makes sense to put Dr. Bredesen's work into action so that you can get the benefit. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. We're gonna take three more questions and then we're gonna sign off. But if you're in our coaching class, you're gonna see Dr. Love and I do this again. How do, how do people sign up uh, for, for your coaching program? Is, is that is that easy for them to do? It is in the chat. Tyler is putting the link in the chat. You just go to startreversingalzheimers.com and that that is there for you with all of the details. And we're so, so, so grateful to have all of you. And we would love to welcome you into that community. Thank you, Tyler. I see it. She's put it in the chat. Startreversingalzheimers.com and you can learn all the details and get signed up. And when you sign up today, we got two surprise bonuses for you. They're a surprise to, to Dr. Sanderson. So so one, you get a, a live coaching call with me where it's, it's going to be us in a small group setting. I'm just going to answer your questions and, and give you my very best stuff. And I'm just going to be there to be as helpful as I can. Um, and then number two is you're going to get a new program that I'm making. It's my top 10 brain supplements. I share with you what to look for in a great supplement, the brands that I like and trust. Um, what, how not to mix your supplements. For example, you don't want to take magnesium with iron uh, or calcium. They, they compete for absorption. Some supplements come with magnesium and calcium, which is counterproductive. So I showed you how to take your supplements. And, um, and then that's both a, a video that explains it as well as an ebook. Um, and so you get, you get both of those, you get, you get all three of those things. You get those, those two things that are the one program, the top 10 brain supplements, and uh, you get a live call with me. Uh, that'll be super duper fun yes, and so valuable thank you so much again i'm just like overwhelmed with gratitude for all of you for being here dr love being here and just offering these incredible valuable extras to everybody who is signing up for the coaching program so we can't wait to bring you into our small group have an even more intimate session where we can have these conversations and get you the benefit so a couple more questions. Actually, let's take this lion's mane question. Another lower, uh, any other lower histamine options to lion's mane? Oh, have you heard about lion's mane triggering histamine? No. Hmm. Okay, that's a new one to us. No, lion's mane is anti-inflammatory. And so I would expect it to lower histamine. Um, if you have a reaction to lion's mane, definitely don't take it. Um, I would get tested maybe for a mushroom allergy. A number of people have a mushroom allergy and they don't find out until they take a, a mushroom supplement. Lion's mane is a mushroom. So um, that would that would be my thought on that. I'd get tested for a mushroom allergy. Um, okay, and then from Jody, crazy question, but can a healthy person who has many family members with Alzheimer's spend a month at your facility to get started or forced into the lifestyle? I'm not good at sticking to ketos, but I do exercise. Oh, Jody, we'd love to have you. Um, just reach out to Carrie again, 760-505-8145. And we'll, Carrie or Leah can talk you through what your options are. And um, it's it's effort to move in, but we, we'd love to explore that with you and, and potentially have you. Um, and then do we ever work with ALS patients and does the Bredesen protocol help them? 
Great question. And then I want to talk about brain tap for a second, but ALS. So Dr. Bredesen has been, I have worked with a handful of ALS patients. Yes. And so have people in Dr. Bredesen's orbit. Um, and I talk to Dr. Bredesen about every single ALS patient I have. Now, what we recommend, one of the top things that I want to make sure everyone who's suffering with ALS or has a family member who is, do not get into the ketogenic diet, add ketones, but maintain your carbohydrates. Do not drop them. And glycine, 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 glycine. So those are a few quick things to just get started and just to make sure you don't fall into the, the trap of potentially going into ketosis when you need ketones and glucose present for ALS. Um, so Dr. Bredesen, I feel so fortunate because tomorrow I get to review cases with him. So every Thursday night, I get to review cases with Dr. Bredesen and I would take any ALS case to him. Yes, there are participants in trials. There are people who have done the Bredesen approach with ALS who've gotten benefit. Now we do not, we have not had the numbers that we have with Alzheimer's and dementia. So we cannot, I cannot speak with the same confidence that I do with dementia. Uh, we know what to do with ALS. It's a, uh, it's not quite as clear. That's, that's actually my exercise to, um, but that's my alarm to exercise. Oh, don't like, forget. I, I set an alarm every day to make sure that I'm exercising. I Sorry about it. that. Forget no, me. I love, love, love it. Um, this, that What a great strategy. So I, pull, your alarm. I, so I like my work so much. I got to pull myself away away from work. Because other, it's, I would I, I work until sometimes as late as 11.45. And I got to make sure that I step away from the office to actually exercise. Because I, I enjoy what I do so much. So. I love it. You know, we both have very different strategies. Will you talk us through what, what is a day in the life of Dr. Oh, Lev? geez. It's, surpri it's surprisingly uninteresting when I break down how rigid it is. So I, I basically, I wake up after about eight hours of sleep. I, I get it. I actually stand on the power plate for a minute to vibrate and increase uh, blood flow. I take some supplements. Uh, I take, I might, I may take some peptides. I drink a glass of water and I'm outside for 20, 30 minutes walking around my area, getting sunshine. I'll then come back and do some exercise, uh, Wim Hof breathing. So that's kind of like, uh, it's, it's breathing to really oxygenate the brain and body. I'll then do a cold shower, finish with hot. Um, then I'll uh, make coffee. Uh, ideally, this is like an hour and a half after I've woken up and um, I'll make coffee and I'll sit down with a, a pen and paper and say, okay, what are the priorities today? I'll work on the priorities and then kind of strategize the day. I have meetings throughout the day. Um, I eat... Uh, a lot of broccoli, cauliflower, and mushrooms. I eat that pretty much every day. Um, and then uh, I exercise between four and five. Uh, food after that, I eat my, la eat my last food after uh, at 8 p.m. And then I work, um, I do my, some of my best work between nine and 11 for some reason. And then sometimes I'll often, I say I want to stop working at 11, but I often work until 11.45. And then I have an alarm at 11.45 that says, you've got to stop working now stop. because I want to be asleep by one, which means I got to, be in bed by 12.30 journaling. So then I get ready for bed and tidy up the house and do all those things. And then uh, 12.30, I'm in bed journaling. I've taken my sleep supplement, which is lion's mane. Um, I, take a I take a testosterone precursor and then, um, then I'll take melatonin right before I go to bed. And then I put mouth tape on my mouth to keep nice. me breathing through my nose. Um, and in there, there's, there's a lot of work uh, that I really enjoy. And then uh, time with a lot of people that I enjoy working with. And then sometimes I get to be with people in person that I work, so that I work with. We're so lucky. Yeah, I go to bed between 8.30 and 9. I am an early to bed person and then I'm more of an early riser. But like I said, I need that eight to nine hours. And so I'm often up between five and six and I have my matcha tea with collagen and keto creamer in it. And I sit outside or in the, in the direct sunlight and then I do my meditation and I do not like to start my day without that. And I get interrupted by my five-year-old and I need to get to work to see patients, but it is great um, to have that morning or evening routine. And then I have to schedule exercise. So because my days are very jam packed, I've got to schedule it. So I have make sure that I get to a class a few times a week. I would like to get more exercise. We were talking about this yesterday. I would like to get more exercise than I'm currently getting, but I have to make it easy. I have to schedule it and I have to make it quick. If I, if it makes me sweat too much, then I have to wash my hair, which is a whole project. So everybody's got a different routine, but we both, we both live the medicine 
And we have very different ways of going about it. So make this fit for you. Figure out ways to join our coaching program because everyone's different. There's going to be an ideal day, an ideal week that fits for you and your lifestyle. And what we want to do is get you on track so that you're living it. Okay, one more question. I see uh, Dr. Love, please yes. address the TikTok yeah. question. Elizabeth, what's the TikTok question? Uh-oh. I, I'm, I'm happy to answer any question that I can. I don't know what the TikTok question is. Um, if it's about, is TikTok going to be shut down? Probably not. Um, they have a year between now and then. Someone will buy it or they'll, or they'll change, the, change the law. Um, I don't know what your question is referring to. Uh -oh. um, what about BrainTap? I don't know anything about BrainTap. Oh, it's the TikTok is a younger generation. Yep. Why do you have all your information on the TikTok? Great question. I do not have all my information on there. I'm also on Instagram and also on Facebook. I and want... you have an email list. Yeah. You can also do it by email. Yeah. So if you want to sign up for your email. Um, I actually don't. I usually give stuff away to sign up for my email, but I don't have that up right now. So Elizabeth, if you're on Instagram or if you are on Facebook, you can follow me on both of those. Um, and so that's 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 an easy. TikTok and Instagram have been an easy ways for me to publish a lot of information and reach a lot of people. And so I do that. Um, and then I have an email list as well. If you email my team, support at roarlionsmain.com, support at roar, R-O-A-R, lionsmain.com, and say, I'd like to join the email list, they will put you on the email list as well. Um, most of the links are on email are directly to TikTok. She signed up for your email. Yeah, okay, so those are to TikTok videos. You can, you can still watch those without being on TikTok. Um, you can just watch them in your browser. So a lot of people like videos in their emails. And so I send them videos of some of my best performing videos because that's generally the information people want. And so I, I send my my best. Thanks, thank you. Tyler. Thank you, Tyler. Um, in my email, I try to send the best information. And so I'll say, hey, this video went viral because people are really interested in how to lose weight with this specific drink. Um, click here to watch the video. And so that so people generally want to watch the video versus read the email. Uh, but I try to put the information out in multiple different ways: TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, even have a YouTube channel that I'm not using that much. And then my then my email list. Um, and then sometimes I do TikTok and Instagram live. So I'm, I'm trying to put the information out in a lot of different ways that work for different people. Yeah, Dr. Love is incredibly generous with his time, his expertise, everything that he's learned. He has dedicated his career and his life to experimenting and understanding and doing the research to understand what the science says about how to prevent and reverse Alzheimer's. And all of this he puts out for free. And that is really, I'm so grateful to you because it really is helping to change the narrative around what is possible, which is also completely aligned with my goal of helping people prevent and reverse dementia and Alzheimer's and get the most out of the, the, this age stage of life where we're retired and there's so much to look forward to. So, so, so much. Your Instagram handle? Uh, if you just search Robert Love on Instagram, YouTube, or if, if you search Robert Love, it comes right up. Robert Love on Instagram, Robert Love on TikTok, Robert Love on Facebook. Fantastic. So much fun. It's been incredible having you guys here. It's always more fun when Dr. Love is with us. And I'm looking forward to seeing many of you next week or in the coaching program. Can't wait to get to know you better. Please uh, reach out to Tyler at soulseri.com or go to startreversingalzheimers.com to learn more. There's Tyler. There she is. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for all of your help tonight. Um, we're so grateful for you every time. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Have a good night.